2 Thessalonians chapter 3, bitter bridge burning. And, and that's oftentimes what happens when you burn bridges, people get bitter. Get bitter about it, and they hold resentment, and, and they just harbor this, this bitterness towards people. And specifically, what I really want to be focusing on is your relationship with other brothers and sisters in Christ. Because we ought not to have that level of, a, of, you know, just total burning bridges with people. Because there's going to be times where people are going to come and go, Okay, even in our, in our church, in every church, there's always people that come and go. There's going to be differences sometimes. Some people are going to think differently. Some people are going to hold to some, you know, maybe slightly different doctrines. And some people are going to value some stances higher than others. And it's going to cause some division. It's going to cause people to separate. And it's just part of life. And people holding, some people hold some things more importantly than others. And it's just going to happen. But when we have brothers and sisters in Christ who, for these various reasons, are, you know, separating or, or not really walking with us anymore, whatever, we ought to maintain a proper, you know, relationship there that if there's no reason to burn bridges, then we ought not to, you know, wish ill upon people or try to just be like, well, forget you. And I touched on this a little bit this morning. But I'm going to go much more in depth. We're going to look at some scripture to just deal with, uh, you know, because oftentimes in our flesh we feel like, you know, oh, well, you want to leave, well, forget you then, right? And that's an attitude you want to have. Oh, someone, someone does me wrong, then you want to just wish them wrong, right? Someone does something bad to you or someone does something that you don't think is right, and then your immediate knee-jerk reaction is just going to be like, well, you know what? I hope something bad happens to you or whatever, Right, and we're going to see what the Bible teaches on some of these various subjects. We're starting off in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, and I covered this recently, but this is one of those instances where believers are commanded to withdraw from other believers, from other people who are not walking orderly. There are times when we ought to separate from people, and it's righteous and it is appropriate to separate. Look at verse number 6. The Bible says, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which ye received of us. Now, this isn't just a standalone statement that you can understand exactly what he's talking about without the context. The context is really important here because we need to know what does it mean disorderly? Like, what are you talking about? You can't just take that statement and just try to apply that, like, well, I'm just going to break those for you. Well, you're disorderly, you're disorderly, you're disorderly. Well, let's see what that means, right, in the Scripture. You can't just go run with it and run wild. Let's see what he's referring to. What is it that is disorderly? Because clearly he's saying, hey, withdraw yourself. Don't have anything to do with that person that's walking disorderly. Verse 7, for yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. So, okay, now he's going to start to say, well, some people are disorderly, but we were not. And here's how they weren't disorderly. Look at verse number 8. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us. So here he's talking about laboring, working day and night to basically provide for their own stuff to provide for their own needs to pay the way for their food and their needs whatever it was that they needed while they're ministering to the church at Thessalonica so instead of taking things from other people it's like no we worked for it okay we worked and provided for ourselves so that none of you had to take care of us we paid our own way 